Junior, former Gloucester Junior and Ulster Council, has been for a number of years. Geography teacher, St. Pius School in Marafel. Um, coached the under, under 14, 206 Bela team in All Ireland. Um, I met this guy 20 years ago. Uh, didn't know who he was, only of course in Limerick, that type of master tutor coach. And he never shut up. From I got there, I landed. He was still asking questions. When I got there in the two days, he was still asking questions. On the way back, he was still asking questions. Um, from that, we built a relationship. Uh, the guy John Morris and myself put two or three books together about 10, 15 years ago. One of the books, Games for Better Team Play, the, the games that counties are still playing now, they're actually doing that. That was 20 years ago. That's how far this guy was ahead of his time. Most creative guy ever I met. It's interesting in there when Rob was saying the coach of philosophy we just then we do the one thing. Philip Dawson, Philip thinks outside the box and always has. He writes plays, he plays in a band. What else do you do? Stand, Stand behind a flip chart. <laughs> <laughs> so, give me Philip care. Philip, over to you. That's my twin brother, Peter, he's talking about. <laughs> I'll tell you now, that 20 years ago thing. I asked questions the whole way down to Limerick and the whole way back simply because he knew stuff and I didn't. And all I wanted to do was go down to Limerick and ask the questions. And I'm still asking questions to people simply because I don't like anything complicated. It doesn't work for me. When I'm in school, it just doesn't work for me. There's people coming up with policies and action plans. None of that works for me. My brain doesn't get that. So I want it simple. Now, one of the ex-students and surprise here. Paul and I were sitting with a few of the boys here for about half an hour thinking there was nobody coming. I was about to phone the family to get them to come up. But we're saying, as he came through the door, no, they've all been put out of somewhere else. They're not here, or else they're here for the wrong reasons. Now, this really bothers me at times, honest to God. I think there's people maybe in the room thinking, we're going to do this thing, and all of a sudden they find out he's not going to do that. So if you take an imaginary phone call and leave after five or six minutes, I don't understand. You think he's not doing, <laughs> he's not doing anywhere near the stuff we wanted. Right. I'll, honest to God, I understand. We'll talk among ourselves when you leave or whatever. But really what you want is this. And what I want what I want to do is this. This thing is new to me, so we'll go with it. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill off something here, Rima. Terrence, I know this is your thing, but I'm gonna praise you for it in one way. If you're here thinking I'm gonna get more about fun, 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 fun. I'm actually not, right? Because I think the work that has been done on making sessions fun and making sessions uh, more meaningful, etc., down through the years with people like Terence McWilliams and Eugene Young and all those people at the forefront of that has been immense. And if we haven't learned it by now, we're not going to learn it. Right? There, there are fewer of the sessions at Edmund ever that you'll go to any club and see really, really bad practice or that's turning kids off. Most people have bought into that by this stage. So my, my sort of thing for fun is, that's as far as I'm concerned. Fully understood now, drop it. We're all making it fun, full stop, right? If not, there's somebody in your club that's going to push you in one way or another. What I'm going to look at is something different, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here because I just want to put things to you, and if you want to argue back, you can argue back. And there's a few wee activities to do in pairs or threes down there, and I'll ask you some questions. But at the end of it, we want you to take something away, because I'm very, very conscious. I've done a number of different talks in different places, and I'm always thinking when I go home, if they walk out that door, and they're never going to change a thing. It's just the way they're going to be. And that's born out of one thing that I did years ago. I went to the loop. I'm not run down the lift. Local club, three miles from me. I went to the lift. Johnny McBride was an under 12, etc. He was in my old school. They were all playing Paul McFlynn. And they asked me to come out and run four or five sessions. And the coaches would stand and watch. So we ran four or five sessions. Coaches stood and watched. Uh, and I thought I was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Unreal. Get back into school. And I met, uh, say, Paul McFlynn's younger brother, Shane, at that time, a few weeks later. Well, how's things going to look? They're not. And I did my usual giving off, and well, we did this, that, right? and that. And then I met one of the coaches, and he just said the most honest thing to me, and that was, but you, you did it all. We, we, we didn't read. You didn't have balls. You, you did it all. And the problem was that I had thought I was going home with 
They've all sorted the things out to look now, and all I was going home with was a big head, thinking I did things for them, thinking they had done it. So I'm asking you at the end of this, if you think there's one or two wee tiny things that you want to go and change at your club, you have got to have the guts to go and do that, no matter what position you're in in that club. If you get an affirmation here, which means we already do that, we already do that, we already do that, fair enough. I'm not saying this is gospel, this is just heartfelt in that this has happened to me and I've wised up to it in this particular thing I'm going to do today. Right, what are we going to do today? Um, quite, I put a question mark after this delivery, developing young players. And again, I said I'm playing devil's advocate here by saying to you, this is my take on it. I think developing young players for a lot of us, including me, is a series of missed opportunities. We have missed the boat on a number of occasions with young players. That is not running coaches down, it's just life the way it is. And we have an opportunity to maybe get in there and learn from other sports and pick up on a few events and pieces. So we're going to start with these couple of quotes here. Mark Twain, I was seldom able to see an opportunity until it had ceased to be one. Now you turn that into Gaelic games, and that could be a player where You've maybe missed the boat on, and you should have changed and had an input into that person a wee bit earlier in their playing career. And you didn't. And you think you've missed the boat on that. The other one, I'll tie these up at the end to see how they work, is this. Opportunities are never lost. Someone will take the one you miss. I don't agree with that. But someone will take the one you miss. In the case here, I'm saying another club might take the opportunity that you miss. It doesn't mean they're going to take the player from you, but they're going to take the opportunity that you miss. And I have a very, very clear example of that, about two clubs. And um, it'll tie up at the end to see one club took the opportunity and the other club didn't. And the gap has just become a gulf. <coughs> so, anyway, here are four <coughs> players. They exist, it's just me messing about with the computer, etc., and uh, trying to make them unrecognizable, which I couldn't do, so I couldn't take the risk, so I just covered the faces. Right? So these are four players, and they were 10 or 11 years old when this was taken. Action shot at a Go Games thing or whatever, or ABC and stuff. They are now 19 or 20 years old, the same four players. I have to preface this by telling you they are all playing Gaelic football, they are all active. They're all, nothing has gone awry for them in their lives elsewhere where they're sort of, you know, they've gone off their, their diets, whatever they want to do. They're all doing weight training, they're all doing this different thing, but different things have happened to them on the playing field. So, now this was yellow on mine, but it sort of come out a wee bit differently. You can hardly see this. I'm going to point this out to you, with me. This guy's <coughs> Club A. We're going to call it Club A, right? Um, next to him, Club B. Number three over there is Club A, and number four is Club B. Now, at the back, I apologize for this, but it was yellow set coming up against this. So you've got Club A, Club B, Club A, Club B, right? In the intervening eight, nine years, bit by bit, the people in Club B have gone up. They're much the better player than they were then. They have improved in a number of different ways obviously technique, etc. but there's one area that we're going to look at in particular. These people have not. They have gone back. The Club A people have gone back. Now if I tell you, at 14, at 12 and at 14, and even a degree at 16, but at 12 and 14 these two clubs played each other with these players in it, and these players very instrumental, and there was always about a point or two difference between them. In fact, one group beat the other and then went on to win a major tournament, etc., etc. But Club B, in the last three to four years, has just shot through the roof in their coaching and what they've developed players in. And the other club has not. Has stood still and has actually maybe gone down a wee bit. So you've got to picture that and think, are you from Club A or are you from Club B in these circumstances? Now, as I said to PD a wee bit earlier, I had this vision that we're going to be in a big room and there's only going to be about 20 people, so we're going to pile a room around the place and we can literally do an activity which meant you're going to do a walking debate here. In other words, we were going to have true on that side and false on this side, or yes on this side and no on this side, and you're going to get the dinner ready by just walking. You know, and it's just not going to work. So this is going to be a show of hands time. Be brave. Don't think I'll sort of wait until I see what's happening beside me before I decide my hands put up or not. Be brave and put your hand up when you if you decide yes or no to the following things. So we're going to look at Club A. 
the United Victory, you had a Club A, which might be a bit of a sweeping statement. You might think they're all like in Club A, or you might think, no, no. So you have some sort of picture of Club A in your head at the minute. I'm going to point out some things that I want you to make a decision on to do with Club A. Right, Club A operate with under 8s, under 10s, 12s, 14s, 16s and minors. All at under 8s, right? Um, the group of Club A decide that they're going to put a note to parents. The note to parents is going to say something about how the coaching is going on in their club. When I show you this note, I want you to read it and assume, do you think Club A would ever send that note out? If it's a yes, we'll ask for the decision in a minute. Just think, would they ever send this out? Or would, if you were part of Club A, would you ever send that out? So we are pleased to inform our parents that the above teams will be coached and developed this season as each management team sees fit. Right. Now, we're this massive committee for Club A. We're taking a vote on it. Who wants that sent out to parents? Hands up, please. So I'm taking it. You're going for that. Send that out. Just to be sure in this, just to be sure in this, who does not want that sent out? I'll look, I'll look, as soon as you start to move there. Okay. <coughs> Second question is this. Now I'm not going to go around you and say, why not, why not, why not? Don't worry, we're not going to kill this off with feedback. At the minute. We're just... Second question is still on this. Who thinks that is the case? That is the case of clubs. All right? So, I mean, you may think it's pie in the sky to say, oh, come on, of course it's the thing, that that's going to happen to clubs. But that is the case of my club, and I'm supposed to be heading up things, this, that, and the other. And we want to work out, is it, is it possible that you can actually get people to sort of merge a wee bit more and think of it with a hand over to each coach or each coaching group and, and, and have a bit more communication. But that is the case in most clubs. In other words, when you get the under 14 job, it's yours, as long as you don't mess up big time. It's yours. And the under 16s don't really know much about it, and the under 12s don't know much about it. And really, only parents will complain whenever their son or daughter is involved. Second thing about selecting Club A management. Now remember, don't go with the norm and think they're all going to be this. Make your individual decision. Let's say we're going for Club A management and we identify a particular team. And this is fact with your, with your club. Two years ago, the under 12s swept all before them. Any volunteers now for the under 14? So you've worked out that the present under 14s are the under 12s and two years ago you swept all before them. How many people think this would be the situation in your club if it was Club A? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. You know. But now the magnanimous among the magnanimous, like I said, among you would say, look, no, no, it's all about development. Okay. You see the mess up? You're for the hammer. And then the pressure goes on. But that is, that is the case sometimes. And remember, in Club A, there are teams like that. Right. Next one, Club A handover. So we have a situation here where we've just taken two sets of photographs, one you concentrate this one on the left of the middle, and think, right, with these guys, would this happen? This season they moved from under 10 to under 12 level. Their new coaches know, know little of their traits. They know little about them. Right, let me see, show of hands. Agree with that? Yeah. Right, vast majority. Now, I know, look, you might think this fellow's in Southern Ireland Cousins here, but just bear with me. See, have a look at these girls on the right hand side, and I'm putting this statement down here to say this season they will play for three different management teams. 16s, maybe a development school, this, that, the other. Those teams rarely communicate about how to develop the players. What's your take? Yes? yes. Okay, so generally, Generally, that is us. That is us and the GAA. We have to admit it. Now, we're not damning each other. We're not saying, as a result of this, we're a disaster of an organisation. We put out terrible teams. We do this and the other. We're so much better. But there's some way we could possibly go, even within our teams. So, last one on this. Uh, Club A coaching. There's a staple. <coughs> How many people reckon that is the case for Club A? 
Whereas they vote for no. Right. So, and, and we're all at it. I mean, I'm working with, say, I'm working with the miners and uh, I'm with Ronald McCusker and Joe McQuill and Martin Duffin. We do make a concerted effort to make sure Martin does this, Joe does this, Ronan does this, Philip does this, etc., etc. But there are times we land down there maybe where there's no role for certain people. But we know that there's other places in the, or other teams of the club where the only idea of what way the training session is working is in one person's head. And when they go down, the rest are sort of standing leaning over the fence. Now, I'm going to move it on from here because I've simply wanted to identify some traits that you might have considered with Club A. Now, to put, put it in this picture, this is what I think might be going through your head. None of this is news to us. Thanks for the reminder, but you've just described most TA clubs liberal. In other words, we're going to walk out of here, not fun. It's going to be the same. It's going to be the same. It's going to thrive, it's going to be the same. But there are certain things you've got to think about possibly changing. Because you then maybe look, make a, a better, take a better look at it when you look at an individual player. So let's look at this guy here. This is his journey. This is his actual journey. Right. He was the guy at Club A, number one on the list here. So this boy at under 12 had those characteristics. <coughs> Very comfortable on the ball. Strong, brave, good tackler and rocker, pacing, scores regularly. At 14, as above, still the same. At 16, developed a major playing problem. Now, I did not say developed a major social problem. He didn't find that Budweiser existed, etc. He developed a major playing problem. And at 19, 18, little or no change. Still had that major playing problem. You got it? Right? So, pairs, threes, fours, you have to discuss and decide his playing problem. So I need you to turn to somebody near you, whatever, one way or another, people you know, people you don't know, and take two or three minutes to decide, what do you think on the next slide was his major playing problem? <laughs> 